This is tutorial 1-3 in GIS tutorial workbook 2. Uh, what, how we're going to start this one is we're going to open up the tutorial 1-3 map. In this one what we're interested in is learning how to limit how many values are being displayed. Um, in many cases there's a lot of things but we're only interested in a small percentage so rather than have an overwhelming display we're going to narrow it down just to what we need so we're just gonna go to data view and the book doesn't ask you to do this but we're just gonna open up the attribute table early um, and this is what we're interested in in this tutorial um, the codes here as you can see there's a whole bunch of them here we're only interested in six of them but as you can see there's a lot more different codes than just six so we're just gonna close that we're gonna open up the properties next and go to symbology right now everything is just the same symbol um, if we were going to be dealing with numbers we'd come to quantities in order to do this but we're dealing with groups so we're going to use categories and we're going to use the unique values and the field we're going to be using is code and in the past we would have just clicked add all values and as you can see it just adds everything now you could just click on them and hit remove but it wouldn't be too difficult to do that in this case but sometimes you're dealing with hundreds and hundreds of values to where it just would not be time useful for time management so what we're going to do is remove all of them we're going to go to add values and in here we can choose which ones we want so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the control button click on MH R1 R1A R1L, R2, and TH. I'm going to click OK. As you can see, now we just have those. If we click count here, it'll give us an appropriate count. We should have 56, which we do, and 232 that we don't need. And we're going to uncheck this box because we don't want them to have any color fill. That way, their presence won't distract the person looking at the map. And uh, the first thing they want us to do is go in here and give these labels a more appropriate title. So we're just going to go and do that. Okay, and once that's done, uh, they want us to also change the color scheme. Um, normally, a person, when doing these, you should choose your own color scheme, one that you find is suits itself. I'm going to stick to what the book says, even though I don't like the color scheme that they, they have picked. I find it hard to tell the difference in colors. And to change just an individual one, we, uh, we just double click on the color. And the first one they want to be yellow. Oops, this one's supposed to be tan. Whenever choosing colors, you should take into account that a lot of people can be colorblind, and uh, so a lot of colors kind of blend into each other. So you should pick colors that aren't similar to each other. And as you can see, it got rid of everything that is not in our our interest. And we're gonna 
zoom out to full extent just to see what we really have here. Um, just click off the lot boundaries and as you can see this is basically everything that we were interested in. If we turn it back on it got rid of a good chunk of the city. So we're just going to go back to our previous extent. We're going to continue to zoom out a little bit and pan just so we can see a more variety of colors. We were just in a, it looks like a single family detached area, but now we have a little assortment of different kinds. Okay, and uh, now what they want us to do is they want us to save what we did as a layer. The reason you would want to do this is say if you were someone interested in doing a lot of zoning regulation on residential areas, you wouldn't have to want to go in and keep doing this over and over and over again. So by saving this as a layer, all these colors, all these names, the selection of names will be saved. So it, rather than doing this, we can just go ahead and have it done. You should save this in my exercise folder as residential zoning. Now what they want us to do is open up the attribute table once again. As you can see, what's sh being shown is not the only thing in the, the zoning codes uh, inside the attribute table. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a definition query to, to limit what we see in the attribute table. So we're going to go back into the properties. We're going to definition query. And we're interested in codes. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to show you the wrong ways to do it first uh, and explain why. If I do code equals get unique value mh and r1 and so on, it would not work because right now it would work for MH. It would go, it would look in code and look for a value that equals MH. And it would look for a field called R1 and it would not be able to find it. So you'd get an error. So we're just gonna clear all this. Um, we're gonna go to code equals MH and code equals R1. People often have a, a tendency to choose this kind of setup as well. See, now what it's going to do is it's going to look in the code field because it's that's the fields that we're telling it to look into, and it's going to look for a value that's equal to both MH and R1. There are none, so we would have no values show up. So we're just going to clear that. Now this is the one that we do want. We want to click on code equals mh or code equals r1 so it's going to go down the code field and it's going to look for mh or r1 and so on so we're just going to keep doing that until we're we're done with all the ones that we want It's good to kind of go a little slow. It's you're less likely to have to repeat. Click OK. And we're going to do OK. And a good sign is that a box didn't come up here saying that an error had occurred. Uh, so we're just going to open up the attribute just to make sure. And as you can see in here, we're down to 56 values rather than the 288 that we started with. Now the last thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a legend. So we're just going to go up to, to our layout view, go to insert, and 
at a legend. Now, right now, we're only interested in the zoning districts, so we're just going to get rid of the lot boundaries. People are going to assume that these little, these breaks are buildings. Uh, with that done, we're going to stay with a one column because it's only one item. Uh, let's change the name of our legend. You should never really have legend on your legend because everyone knows what it is. You should always give it a uh, title that uh, tells you some kind of information about the map rather than just say legend. They want to give it a gray background, a light one, and then go to next. There's nothing in here that we really need to do. Okay. Now, what they want us to do is they want us to look at here and look at the border and see how the gray is kind of far out from the, the symbols and the text. They want us to change that. So we're just going to double click. And in here where it says gap X, I'm just going to put a four and a four. I'm just going to move this to the side. And it, I want you to look here why I click apply. As you can see, what it did is was it just trimmed around the edges and brought it in tighter. That will keep you from maybe covering up some of your map that you don't want to do and still be able to have a background. Okay. And that's it for this tutorial.